How's it going, Jack Tackers, and welcome back to another video for you guys. Today, I'm going to be doing my review for Superman and Lois, Season 3, Episode 2, which was titled Uncontrollable Forces. What a sad episode, especially that final scene. Holy cow, bro. Ugh. Just depressing and very sad, but we'll get into that later in the review. Um, <laughs> really left on a depressing note. Um ouch i i mean i don't know i was i was in a happy mood before watching some of those uh scenes in the in the kind of final minutes of the episode uh, i was in a i was in a decent mood and now i'm just like bro i mean I, okay you know what why not let's just <laughs> let's just talk about it now um while it's on my mind uh lois was diagnosed with cancer in this episode and uh, it was just very sad. I mean, I kind of expected something was wrong with her at the end of the last episode, obviously because it was confirmed she wasn't pregnant. And uh, but then I was like, okay, maybe it's like stress or something. I was I thought I thought maybe they would go down that route. Um, you know, in the cold opening of the episode of this episode, it was just like very kind of interesting in terms of whether or not she had cancer or not. And I mean, I don't know a lot of medical stuff, so I didn't know the certain clues that they were showing us in that cold opening. I didn't know for sure if it, if it was confirming that she had cancer or not because they didn't outright say she did. But then by the end of the episode, yes, yeah, she does say she's uh, battling breast cancer. It's like, holy crap, dude. Not fun. Although, also, let's be real, I kind of think she'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, she's one of the main characters in the show... I can't really feel too nervous for her character, you know. It's still going to be sad and tough, you know. But in terms of her dying, I don't exactly feel like she will. Uh, that's just my opinion, though. I mean, some people might genuinely be nervous for her character this season. But, uh, you know, I, I know some people have said, uh, are worried that this might be the final season of the show. So maybe they will kill Lois. Although, I feel like I heard somewhere that they were going to do a fourth season, maybe even a fifth season. Um, so, I feel like we might get another one after this. So, season three won't be the final season. Um, but if it was the final season, then I guess I could understand why some people would actually be nervous for Lois's character that she could die or something. But, yeah, I mean, I don't really want to talk about it that much anymore. It kind of just made me sad, bummed me out. Let's get into uh, some of the other stuff. Uh, well, well, while we're still talking about Lois, basically Lois is trying to figure out why Henry Miller was released and Clark and her basically team up and, um, they, uh, go to this judge who basically, uh, was kind of a part of the rigged system as she puts it in this episode, judge Reagan, I think her name was or something like that. And, uh, you know, She's kind of, uh, might, might have some, some people might have some dirt on her, basically, uh, and maybe forced her to release Henry Miller, uh, and when those, when those, uh, guys showed up, I love that scene, when they were, uh, wanting to get Clark and Lois out of the, uh, building, and Clark's like, uh, no need to get physical, it was funny, funny stuff, <laughs> uh, but we did also get the scene with Superman meeting Bruno, uh, meeting up with Bruno Mannheim, Played by Chad L. Coleman, of course. Love Chad L. Coleman. I talked about that in my last review. Uh, and, you know, I think it's pretty funny how Bruno Mannheim's kind of pretending to be all innocent when he's not. Because we know he's working with Onomatopoeia. Which, by the way, let's talk about Onomatopoeia for a second. Didn't realize that was him, although it's not a male in uh, Superman and Lois. Onomatopoeia in the comics is a man. And I don't want to be that guy. But, uh... Why'd they have to gender swap them? I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to get canceled and called out and be like, "Oh, dude, it's it's fine, okay, man. This is a man baby crying over the fact that they made Anamanapia a woman." I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be targeted as that guy. But come on, at the same time, I'm like, why is Anamanapia a woman in this? Why? Just come on now. Just I don't know. I mean, some people are going to clown on me in the comments. But, you know, Onomatopoeia is still really freaking cool. 
I gotta say, in this episode, she was pretty awesome. She uh, kills George Dean, Mayor George Dean, and uh, pretty brutal. <laughs> like, he fell on top of the uh, windshield of the car. And also, Onomatopoeia just has such a presence, you know, with all the sounds and stuff. That one scene when Lana and John are finding that flash drive that George Dean left, and then Onomatopoeia shows up at the office and kind of smashes the windows and stuff, and that sound, that presence, you kind of hear Onomatopoeia before she shows up. It just, I don't know. It, um, also, the heels that she's wearing, kind of cringe, brother. Okay. But she's still really cool, at least in terms of her appearance. And by the way, someone informed me that this character was Onomatopoeia in the comments of my last video. My, in the last episode, I didn't recognize it was um, this character. I didn't know that much about the character of Onomatopoeia, though. Uh, but I did know that uh, he's a Green Arrow villain. But also, I, so that's why I, I really wasn't kind of putting the pieces together. I wasn't expecting this character to show up in an episode of Superman and Lois, because, you know, it's a Superman story. Onomatopoeia, I think it's actually been in certain Batman stories as well, or he usually targets, like, vigilante uh, people with no powers, like Green Arrow and Batman. I'm pretty sure, I don't know that much about the character, but I have heard of Onomatopoeia, obviously, and for some reason I just didn't put the pieces together in the uh, last episode. But thank you for uh, informing me, whoever you were. Um... Anyway, she's still really cool in this episode, and yeah, I just wanted to say that. And I wasn't expecting for her to kill George Dean, so there you go. I don't know why I'm saying his full name, but yeah, I wasn't expecting for her to kill the mayor. That was a pretty intense scene, and uh, it was right off the bat, right at the beginning of the episode. Um, but yeah, I also like the scene, I guess going back to the Lois stuff, uh, when she was talking the judge off the edge. Because I guess the, the judge was just kind of scared that they those uh people are going to kill her i don't know i guess um but yeah that was a really good moment for lois uh really love that good good stuff and uh we also kind of have this side plot with sarah wanting nat to have fun and basically find a guy they go to this metropolis party Nat ends up talking to this guy. I think his name was Mateo or something. I don't know. It doesn't, if I got the name wrong, it doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they should have played Ween songs at the Metropolis party. If you don't know who Ween is, they're one of my favorite artists. Um, Gene and Dean Ween. Uh, they played a lot of Ween songs in season two of Superman and Lois. So I was like, missed opportunity. Maybe they did play a Ween song, but it wasn't really up in the forefront of the audio, so I maybe I don't know. This is okay. I'm just going on a rant about not a rant, a ramble about Ween. No one even knows who Ween. They're too niche for you people watching this. If you know who Ween is, let me know down in the comments. Um, but yeah, uh, Jordan in this episode decides to just be friends with Sarah. I guess uh, eh, their, their relationship's kind of bothering me. I mean, I feel like Jordan just should ditch Sarah. Honestly, um, I'm that kind of guy. Um, I still love Sarah, though, like, as a character. I talked about this in my last review. Um, but I guess Jordan's okay with being friends with her. I feel like he isn't. It kind of just, it was kind of weird. He, like, immediately was like, that was a bad snap. Okay, don't know how to snap, apparently. But yeah, he, that was kind of weird, brother. Uh, I gotta say, he kind of just immediately was like, all right, I'll be friends with you. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that was basically all I got to say about the episode. Um, and uh, it was good, though. I don't think it was good as good as last episode. I feel like maybe last episode was a little better. But I will say, Tyler Hecklin, Bitsy Tullock, I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name, great performances in this episode, uh, really emotional stuff, and sad. But yeah, that's all I got to say about the episode. Please let me hear your thoughts on the episode, though, down in the comments below. Definitely curious to see what you guys have to say about it. Thoughts on them gender swapping on Amanapia? Maybe you could have you could have figured out that it was a female from the last episode. But this episode, I finally realized, oh, yeah. And also also the voice uh, when she's talking uh, to Bruno at the end. Yeah, you can definitely tell. I don't like that they did that, but it's fine. I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm not going to get canceled. Women are great. Okay, bye. Leaving. Okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. 
Uh, and check out my social media, my Letterboxd, my Twitter, down in the description and pinned comment below. Yeah. So, uh, peace.